So this winter break, I wanted to embark on a personal goal to see if I could learn French in seven days. Okay, so let me define learning a language. I know I won't be fluent in French in just seven days. I've spent years experimenting with different language learning techniques and resources and practicing Spanish to get to my current level. But I cannot emphasize enough how in just seven days it is possible to get to a conversational level that years of traditional school learning have failed to do so for many language learners out there. Why? Because the way language is taught is backwards. From the moment you learn to speak as a child, you acquire your native language orally not by reading or writing. The goal for language should be oral communication. To me, learning written communication first makes sense only if your profession really requires it, as in you study texts or the history of that language. But for the average person, speaking is really what you want. I wanted to make this video to share how I approach learning languages more effectively. It's exciting to learn a new language because you're tapping into a culture, regions, people that were previously inaccessible to you. My challenge is to see how far I can take learning French within this time span. And at the end, I want to test my abilities with my friend from school, Marie. So I want to re-emphasize that this is a personal experiment. And my goal for the week is to see just how far I can advance and hopefully by the end, I'll be able to hold a full conversation in French. So my baseline currently is that I know a couple of phrases, I know how to pronounce things in French, and I know a couple of select words. So it's probably the equivalent of your average first year French student in high school or something. And that means that I can string together basic words into simple sentences, and, and I'll demonstrate right now. Je m'appelle Latin. Uh, je suis un étudiant. Um, je veux parler le français. I also know a couple of swear words. Putain, merde! <laughs> um, things like that. Um, but this level is not sufficient enough to do anything, really. I can't communicate, I can't engage with the community that speaks this language. And there's still a ways to go before I can move up to that next level and truly be able to speak French. So I ideally want to spend a couple of hours a day doing concentrated language learning practice using techniques like active recall. I'm a huge proponent of this method and I'll talk more about how I practice it later in the video, but you can check out one of my previous videos briefly explaining what it is or look up this guy on YouTube named Ali Abdal who made a really good video about active recall what it is and why it's so effective. To me, learning a language is like a workout. There's this really good book, Flow, and one of its concepts that it states is that when inputting practice for a skill, it may not always necessarily be enjoyable. So it doesn't mean that the only way to learn a language, or any skill for that matter, is for it to feel like a strenuous exercise. Different people have different ways of learning. But here's how I plan to do this. Because we only have such a short time span for this, I want to be as efficient as possible. So the first thing that I did was look up the thousand most common words in French, and I used Wikipedia for this. So a couple things to note about this approach. The first is that I don't usually endorse a approach that learns language purely in a list-based fashion. So some programs and applications that tend to do this are your popular ones like Duolingo or Rosetta Stone. And while I think that these programs are useful for more intermediate or advanced language learners in terms of vocabulary building, I don't think it's the most effective way to start learning a language. Why? It's because they tend to provide random, oftentimes unstructured lists of vocabulary, such as a vocabulary list for kitchen appliances or for the parts of a house. And these aren't that these aren't really useful um, when beginning to build your own everyday conversation knowledge. So back to the thousand most common words approach. This is much more effective because these are words that I know I can get a lot of mileage out of, as opposed to the random words that these other programs would give me, like words for parts of a house, like basement, or words for types of fruit, like blueberry. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to go through the thousand most common words and I will catalog them based on their type, so adjective, noun, etc., in an Excel spreadsheet. 
I'm skipping the verbs for now because I'll actually cover those in my next phase. So for example, there are really common words like very or because that I'll, I'll, that will be in the list and that I'll go through. And I take these words that I've noted down and I put them into Anki, which is a flashcard program where I can practice spaced repetition and active recall to really memorize and learn these words. Sometimes, parfois, much, beaucoup, often, souvent. The benefits of this style of learning are immense and there are lots of videos and research articles explaining why this is so effective and how you can incorporate this into your own learning. All right, it's day two, and I think learning the thousand most common words is going really well. I have most of them in my short-term memory, so translating them into my long-term memory will take more continued, consistent practice. But I feel confident about moving on to the verbs. So verbs get their own section because they're the crux of any language. We all communicate using actions. So verbs are super important. I wrote down a list of the most common verbs like être and avoir, and I will learn the most commonly used tenses for these verbs like past, present, and future. I'm jotting everything down in a notebook. And I usually use digital media like my computer to take notes, but something about writing down verb conjugations by hand really helps. Actually, I used to do that for Spanish too. Then I'm gonna rely on my old friend, Active Recall, to practice these verb conjugations aloud. So I'll go through these verb conjugations um, by speaking out loud until I can basically get them fluently. So it's already day four, and actually I'm feeling a little bit sick. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but we're gonna keep going because it's the seven day challenge. It took me a while to get the verb conjugations down, but I'm fine spending that amount of time because I feel like being fluent around verb conjugations is really important, and that freedom will offer me more flexibility to better communicate. So phase three is where things really start to get interesting because that's where I'll start putting everything that I've done so far together. So I want to pause and note something really quickly. So my normal process would involve me building up words into sentences and practicing those sentences repeatedly. For example, let's start with the word for possible, possible. C'est possible. C'est possible maintenant. Ce n'est pas possible maintenant. C'est possible aujourd'hui, mais ce n'est pas possible demain. Do you see how quickly you can progress? That's because you can combine even a seemingly limited amount of vocabulary in a surprising number of ways to express yourself. Doing this also builds muscle memory, which is an often overlooked tip. And if you're interested about why this is so important, feel free to check down my good friend Akshay's video, which I've linked down below. But this method takes a lot of time. And it's tough. I'm not going to lie, it's a grind. So I don't think we'll be able to do this in our week-long challenge. Instead, to maximize speaking proficiency, I'm going to rely on a time-tested method using an audiobook called Asi Meal. So Asi Meal, the name comes from their objective to assimilate you into the French language. So basically, this book is structured in a series of dialogues and the dialogues are written in such a way that they cover the most common verb conjugations, the most common and idiomatic syntax expressions, and basically strings everything together in a way that allows you to practice realistic conversation material. Basically, how I use this book is I first listen to the audio component where I hear someone just read through the French dialogue. And this builds my comprehension ability, and it also allows me to listen for the proper intonation of how to say things in French. I'm gonna look at the English portion of the text, and I'm going to try to translate it into French. And doing this will help build my association with English thoughts into French output. And my goal in doing this English to French translation is I want to be able to fluently, meaning without pauses, translate the entire English dialogue into French. And then when I do it enough times, I'll be able to say that piece fluently in French. 
And when I'm finally able to do it, it's a super rewarding it's feeling. So I just spent the last couple of hours doing Aussie Meal. Vous avez ce livre entre les mains et vous vous demandez s'il est pour vous. And I immediately started going down the rabbit hole. I started looking up all these grammar rules um, because in French, there are just so many. And the thing that's really weighing on me is that I'm afraid that I won't be able to have a full conversation. The sheer amount of stuff that I don't know is overwhelming. Even though I know that to speak French fluently, I'll have way more time than the seven days I've given myself to accomplish that. But the thing is, I just don't want my conversation with Marie to go poorly. So I have to keep on reminding myself that I've been putting in the work, I have to trust in what I've done, and I just have to keep going. If anything, doing this challenge will serve as a reminder to how far I've come and how far you guys can go in just seven days. So at the end of it all, I'm excited to see where I'll end up. So the past couple days, I've been doing a lot of Aussie meal and reviewing verb conjugations and key phrases using active recall, but I've started to burn out a little bit. You always have to build in breaks into your work so that it becomes sustainable and healthy, and I've had to remind myself of that. So I took a page out of Nathaniel Drew's book and started to really enjoy the process of learning languages. Luckily, we live in a time where we have access to so much digital culture and media through things like YouTube and Netflix that we're still able to do enjoyable things and be immersed in the language. I recently started this Netflix show called The Hookup Plan or Plan Coeur in French, and even though I don't understand much, it's still really entertaining to watch and I'm continuing to surround myself with the language. Another thing that I've started to do is that during my idle time, such as when I'm in the subway or something, I've started to listen to French songs. I'll switch out some of my normal songs that I listen to with French music, and that's just getting me to continue to surround myself and immerse myself in the French language. So part two of this video, including my conversation with Marie, will come out sometime soon, and if you want to follow my progress, please subscribe and check out that video when it comes out. On a more general note, this year I'm on a journey to explore my range, and if you want to learn more about what that means, besides subscribing, feel free to follow me on my Instagram and stay tuned for other ways to connect with me in the future. So that's it, I hope you guys enjoyed watching, best of luck with your language learning endeavors, and I'll see you guys soon in another video. Peace.